Today I'm going to show you how to set up and balance the new Fayotec G6 Max Gimbal. First I will demo this with the Canon M50 mirrorless camera and the kit lens so you can see a standard balancing practice and then by popular request I'm going to show you how to balance it with the Canon M50 and the new Sigma 16mm 1.4 EFM mount lens. Now this is the very vlogging setup I've been showing off and talking about in my recent videos and it's an exciting setup because this gimbal and this lens really allow the Canon M50 to reach its full potential as a vlogging camera. However, from these videos, I learned that a lot of you are really having a hard time balancing the G6 Max with the Canon M50 in this particular lens setup. Um, I know a lot of you are new to using gimbals as am I, which is why I can really speak from experience to some of the challenges that you might face as a newbie gimbal balancer. So I'm not going to breeze through this video as if balancing a gimbal is an easy thing to do. There's a lot of videos out there on the internet that just make it look so easy. It's not difficult, but it is a bit of a learning curve. So we're going to talk about a lot of little details in Involved. There's going to be some specific things I talk about with the Canon M50 in this, some specific issues. All right, so grab your G6 Max, grab your Canon M50, grab a glass of wine, and let's get started. Hi friends, I'm Alicia and this is MATV where I help you level up your vlogging and video production skills. And one of the best ways to level up the look of your footage is to make sure that it is super smooth. Now part of the reason this gimbal balancing thing was so complicated for me right off the bat is because I was determined to balance the Canon M50 with the Sigma 16mm lens. And Honestly, this setup might be a little bit too big for the gimbal, a little bit too much for it to handle, but I do think it works. I was able to make it work, and I can definitely show you how to make it work. So this gimbal can be used with many different types of cameras. I've got a whole review video on the gimbal if you wanna check that out and really learn just kind of more about the gimbal itself. Um, you can use it with the Canon G7X, you could use it with the Sony RX100, um, a lot of the Sony mirrorless cameras, which I think it's kind of made for. Um, you could do it with your GoPro, your smartphone, and then also the Canon M6 Mark II, which I think might be a slightly better option paired with this gimbal over the M50 because of the viewfinder on the M50. And if you're like, what does the viewfinder have to do with anything? It is because sometimes, only sometimes, the balance of the gimbal is gonna cause the top of the viewfinder to hit a, a certain arm on the gimbal. And it really didn't bother me at all when I made that last video and like from the time I started using it until now, it didn't bother me at all. But I do realize it is slightly annoying and it does affect your ability to balance the gimbal in the way that Fayotec suggests. And I will refer to their instructional video Video a few times throughout this video to show you exactly what I mean. However, I have found a way to balance the gimbal um, regardless of this little issue. So I will switch over to the G7X. I'm going to grab my M50 and I will demo all of this for you right now. Okay. I hope this shot here is good. I'm a little bit crouched down, but I really want you to see everything going on right here. And I've got some notes so you can have some really clear and concise steps to refer to. Step number one is to prepare your camera. Now, this is really important because everything that your camera is going to have on it needs to already be on it when you balance the gimbal. So if you're gonna use the Rode Wireless Go, like I suggest, that needs to be on there. Whatever lens you're balancing, obviously it needs to be on there. And we're starting with the Canon M50 kit lens, even if you're just really all about that Sigma, learn to balance the gimbal with this kit lens. It'll be a really good uh, foundational point. Um, consider this like the next level, but start here. Also change the battery pack before you start because once you get everything finally perfectly balanced, the last thing you want is to realize that you have a low battery and you have to take everything off and change it. Step number two, prepare the gimbal. So of course you're gonna wanna charge the gimbal. Fully charged gimbal is always a good idea. You're gonna wanna mount the tripod foot so this thing comes off, but you're gonna need it on there because it's all about setting this up on a table. And you're going to want to make sure it's in setup mode. So this is like the flat mode. This is like pack up mode. Um, setup mode, you're gonna have, you're gonna keep the, okay. Hold on, backtrack, first of all. There's three axes on this gimbal that I'm going to refer to. The pan, the roll, <laughs> I told you I'm no gimbal pro. The tilt, the roll, and the pan. And the reason this is, it's not confusing or complicated, it's just that every gimbal like refers to their three axes in a different way. Sometimes it's yaw, pan, tilt, roll, I mean, these are all different terms that I've heard. And the other reason I really got into my brain to figure out why I keep messing it up, even though I've been like doing this gimbal thing for a while now, is because you think tilt, I think this, right? Well, that's not tilt, that's roll. This is tilt. Okay, so it's kind of counterintuitive. 
One way that I like to think of it, just forget those terms completely as far as the balance is concerned, is just think one, two, three. That's how you balance it. You start here, then you do this one, then you do this one. So, number three, you're gonna leave that alone. There's a lock right here that locks that. You wanna keep that locked for now. You do, however, want to come up to the next lock, which is right here, unlock it, and tilt this up to the right. Open the motor lock and move the gimbal to the installation angle and then lock it. And then lock it, okay? Then you've got this one, number one. Unlock this one, it's right here. And let that guy just kind of swing down. And then lock it. So this is setup mode. This is what the gimbal would look like with no camera, but it's like set up. Then you wanna take the quick release plate this guy right here, and mount it to the bottom of the Canon M50. And you're gonna have a little arrow. That arrow right now is pointing down. Okay, so pretty much overall the arrow is pointing out to the right. Now, this little button right here is called the anti-drop column. Anti-drop just means like the camera could fall off if it wasn't locked. So you're gonna to wanna to mount it and you need to press this button in. And lock the safety lock. Press the anti-drop column, mount the camera on the gimbal. And then underneath, there is a little, I don't know, flippy switch, flippy switch, that um, if you don't lock it, it's gonna still allow you to slide this back and forth. So you wanna get the camera right next to this arm, but not completely pressing against this arm as to inhibit movement. So get it right next to there and then lock it. And then lock it. So basically at this point, if you were to do this, the camera's not going to fall off. Okay, so now the camera is mounted and notice at no point did I say turn the gimbal on. In fact, balancing is something that you're gonna do with the gimbal off because the idea is to get the camera balanced as well as possible on the gimbal so when you do turn it on, the motors don't have to work nearly as hard. In fact, if you do turn it on and say there's no camera on it or the camera's just very poorly balanced, then the gimbal motors will like violently shake and they will definitely let you know that something is wrong and I know some of you guys have experienced that. Definitely stay to the last step of this because I'm gonna tell you something to do that will solve this even if you do think you have it balanced, um, but it's violently shaking because that violent shaking is scary. Okay, so now for the balancing. Open the motor lock on the tilt axis. Open the motor lock of the tilt axis. And by the way, you can refer to this Fayotech video that they made, I will link it below. Um, it's, it's very fast paced. I've never paused and rewinded a video so many times uh, to kind of get the feeling for it. And they are using a Sony camera, so that's a little bit different, but it is helpful. I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without that video. So open the motor lock on the tilt axis. This is this guy right here. Right now everything is locked. So it appears like awesome. Everything seems great, but it's not because it's not even unlocked. So we open the motor lock and boom, whoa. Okay, so in order to balance the tilt axis, you there's two factors that are involved. There is this screw right here. Loosen the knob ring. And this allows you to push this up and down push and pull the sliding arm. Now this one has been the most confusing to me because although it seems like you should adjust it in some way, it also seems like it's easiest to balance when it's down. Um, so right now I've got it just a little bit up so this part is like flush with this part and I'm just gonna start there because the other factor that is even more influential is how far forward or backward your camera sits on this plate. So what you do is you tighten or loosen this screw and then slide the camera back or forward. The camera can moveable after screw is loosened. So pull the camera lens forward and move the camera back and forth until it is balanced. And what you're going for is a situation where it's not falling back and it's not shooting forward. So it's, you know, balanced. I'm gonna lower this some because it doesn't seem to want to balance. Okay, so here's the difference between what you can do with the M50 and what their video is telling you to do with a Sony camera. What they're telling you to do is to bring it all the way back and point it straight up. And when you've got the Rode mic on here, that's not gonna work. But even if you do take the Rode mic off, you can see, oh, actually in this case, it doesn't hit. See, sometimes it hits and sometimes it doesn't. 
push and pull the sliding arm until the lens can face up stably and no longer fall and then tighten the knob ring. Step 2. Put the camera lens forward and let go to observe the falling direction. Either way, it's telling you to balance it pointing straight up. That doesn't work for me and it definitely doesn't work with the Sigma lens. So, what I do is I just kind of get this in a position where it's pointing slightly, it's pointing forward and slightly down. Right now it's pointing slightly up, move it forward, just a, I mean like a micrometer. I know that's not a real measurement, but it, the amount of adjustment that you have to make with these um, sliders is so microscopic, it will blow your mind. I mean, sometimes you can even tighten it and then just like give it like just tiny bit of effort and that will change things. And also to make things even trickier, the M50 kit lens is a zoom lens. So you gotta kind of just pick a spot where you think you might have it and just leave it there, kind of mid-range. Because the longer the lens gets, the more it wants to lean forward, obviously. You'll see once you start doing it, but right now it's pointing forward and that seems pretty good. Okay, number two is the roll axis. And this one's actually pretty easy. I'm gonna turn the gimbal around to show you. I'm comfortable enough with this one to uh, balance it backwards. So you're gonna unlock the roll axis lock Open the motor lock of the roll axis. Observe the falling direction of cross arm. Woo! And that is very unbalanced right now. So basically what you're looking for is the tipping point on this, like this one's just like a seesaw. So you're gonna unscrew this guy and just by feel, you know, go this way and then it goes too far this way and then you push it this way and then it goes too far that way. And that is the essence of balancing because you want to find that tipping point to where it sits right in the middle. Loosen the knob ring, push and pull the cross arm until it's balanced. And then tighten the knob ring. Now in their video, they say that you should be able to tilt it and it stays in either direction. After balancing, cross arm can stay at any angle. That has never been the case for me, not even in one moment. So I just put it right there to where it's just like in the middle. Okay, the last one is the pan axis. <laughs> so that's this guy down here. And this one, for some reason, seemed confusing to me at first, but once I got the hang of it, it wasn't anymore. It's basically this, you know, this bar here, when we unlock it, it goes all crazy. But you want this bar to be parallel to the ground and the gimbal to just kind of sit like that. So right now it's not. Observe the falling direction of vertical arm. Loosen the knob ring and pull and push the cross arm back and forth until it is balanced. Then tighten the knob ring. Okay, and here's the other tricky part. I'm telling you, gimbal balancing is endlessly tricky. You need two hands. I used to think you need two hands, you don't. But you need to hold this level and then simultaneously unscrew this and then tilt this back and forth, which you can't do. So, one way that I figured out how to do it. All right, so put your foot here as if that were just another hand, or you could have a person hold it. I mean, that would be great. You see how it's, and you wanna get this guy so it's like parallel to the ground. So you loosen that up, and you wanna slide it back and forth. Open the motor lock of hand axis. Put the gimbal horizontally. Observe the falling direction of vertical arm. And again, you see that's too far, and that's right about in the middle. And now it's just about parallel to the ground. Loosen the knob ring and pull and push the cross arm back and forth until it is balanced. Then tighten the knob ring. And then tighten it up. Whew, okay, that was a lot of readjusting just for that one shot. So another important thing to know is that even after you have done step one, two, and three, sometimes you need to flow back up to step two, flow back up to step one, and then go back down and back up. Not, not to that great extent, but you can see right now that uh, now this is slightly off center because we balanced step three. So we're gonna go back to step two. And again, just tilt it back and forth. That seems good. I'm surprised there's no like built-in levels on these, maybe higher end gimbals have them, I don't know. And in my last video, I talked about um, mounting up a uh, phone mount so you can have a monitor or you can mount a monitor, but I think using a phone, especially if you're traveling, it was about a minimalist travel vlogging setup, but using your phone because there are screw mounts on the side, 
And a lot of people were like, well, why not just use your flip out screen? And I said, well, that's because once the gimbal's turned on, you don't really wanna be adjusting the screen. It's much easier if something is mounted to the base of the gimbal, so then you don't have to, you know, just like touch what the motors are trying to control. However, if you do want to use the flip out screen, you absolutely can. And I resorted to doing it just the other day because I didn't feel like attaching my phone. <laughs> Guess what? You need to balance it with the screen flipped out. So that definitely affects this second axis, okay? But it's a very easy adjustment. So, but you need to have the screen flipped out before you turn the gimbal on and the camera balanced on the gimbal with the screen flipped out. I hope all this is making sense. Okay, so step four is a very important one that I think people don't know about, but I'm gonna tell you right now. That is that you need to download the Feutech app and sync it up with the gimbal. So the app isn't amazing, but when I first had problems, Feutech sent me this gimbal and I really had some problems with it at first. And I even sent them a video of me balancing it just to make sure I was doing everything right. Turns out I was. But what they had me do is download this app and adjust the motor strength in the app. Now, I absolutely did not realize that maybe every gimbal ships without the motor strength adjusted. I thought it was just mine. Otherwise, I would have mentioned this way earlier. But if you are having problems with the gimbal, if you have turned it on already, and I know you have, then you definitely wanna download the app. So it, search for Feiyu On, and it looks like this. Right now, it is searching for a gimbal. I can't find the gimbal because the gimbal's not on, but since everything is, you know, balanced as far as we know, we're gonna go ahead and turn the gimbal on. So hold down this button right here. You really gotta hold it down for a minute. It makes that cute little sound. Everything looks good. And it really connects well. So it just pops up right away. It says G6 Max. And what you wanna do is go right here to this little gear next to G6 Max tap it, and then go into motor strength. So there's two different things you can do. You can hit the self adapt button and I assume that it kind of just like talks to the gimbal and feels out the load that the gimbal has on it and it self adapts. Or you could just like slide them over to large because this really is almost the largest camera you would have on this gimbal. It doesn't max out the weight by any means, but it gets close. And I don't really know the downside of setting it to large. So either way, but whatever, Whatever happens, you definitely do not want the motor strength to be set to small because this is not a small load for this gimbal. And it does take a minute, but when it's done, you hit save. And if you did have the violent shaking problem, that should solve it. And actually I'm getting a prompt that says save settings failed and I've seen that before. I was really worried about it at first because I was like, no, the motor strength is so important, but actually it does save the settings. Um, it has for me anyway, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. This app definitely isn't great. Really the only function that you need in the app is this motor strength thing. And I wouldn't worry about anything else beyond that. One thing about this gimbal, and I don't know how it compares to other gimbals, but one thing is that I've noticed if you move it too fast or if you get crazy with it, you'll feel like a little bits of jerking. I don't know if better gimbals don't do that or if there's just like limitations on gimbals in general. I'm sure there are limitations, um, but I have found that like slow, steady movements definitely make uh, make the whole thing work better. And also when you're using a gimbal, it's not an excuse to just be like, oh, let me just wave this all around and it'll all be stabilized. That's not how gimbals work. You still have to walk in a very smooth, fluid motion. You still have to try to be stable. If you watch any like gimbal tutorial on how to shoot with a gimbal, they're gonna tell you like, walk like this and do this and be all careful and smooth. And then the gimbal is just gonna smooth out like all those little bumps along the way to get you that super smooth look. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, I'm gonna go back and do this all over again with the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 EFM mount lens. So I'm gonna lock everything back up. That makes it nice and stable and I'm going to switch out the lens. Okay, now we have the Sigma lens mounted and if we unlock this guy, you can see that it just falls flat forward and that is because this is a very front heavy lens or it makes the camera front heavy because um, it's a slightly larger lens. So the trick here really is just to take this and move the camera almost as far back as possible and that will get it closer to where it needs to be. 
And the pivot point obviously is gonna be in between it coming up and it pointing down. And I think it's a little bit better to have it eventually falling to where it's pointing down. It's very, very touchy. Like you just gotta find that exact spot. And sometimes even just to test it, you've gotta retighten it. Um, and if you're having a hard time, make sure that this is dropped down. That helps me balance. I think overall, I'm not sure how it helps the gimbal if it goes up or down, but it definitely just makes it easier um, to balance this tilt axis. Okay, and then of course, you've got to still go through all of the steps again. So unlock the second one. I don't know if the screen flipped out this time, so it's also a little bit different. And then my favorite. And because you have this slid so far back, with this lens, you are definitely gonna have the problem of the viewfinder hitting the top of the gimbal, as you can see right here. And with the road mic, absolutely, but even without the road mic, it's the viewfinder that's hitting right now. So. As I said, it didn't bother me at first. Let me turn this on. The only way I saw it as a problem is if I was like shooting straight up. But if I was shooting straight up, I think I'd be more likely to hold it. You know, a way to get around it would be to hold it like this. And then that is a way to not have to tilt it all the way back. So gimbal balancing overall does take some effort. Um, the good thing about it is that you can do you can do most of it at home. So if you know what camera you're gonna be using and what lens you're gonna be using, you can do the majority of it. And then every time you take your camera off with this screw, all you really have to rebalance is this front back motion. So that makes it easy. And if you switch the lenses out, all you really need to rebalance is that front back motion. Now, when you slide this on, when you slide the camera onto the gimbal, if you slide it further in one time than the time before it, that's gonna affect the balance. So it's very important that in the field you have these tripod feet and ideally that you're able to find a flat surface to just kind of like, get things set before you start filming. It's definitely a pain. It's definitely a little bit of an extra time commitment, but overall I think it's worth it because this super smooth footage, whether it's you know following a subject or if it's shooting B-roll or if you're vlogging, I think it's worth it overall to just have it nice and smooth rather than that shaky jerkiness. And there's really so much involved in being a gimbal operator, and I'm definitely just like getting better at it as I go with practice. It's so important to practice. Also, this is off the record because it's not official yet, but I do think, I'm 90% sure I am going to grab that Canon M6 Mark II that was recently released. At first, you know, I wasn't like crazy about the specs on it or anything, so I wasn't like, oh my God, I've gotta get this. I'm an M50 girl, of course, and I will continue to use the M50, but I do need a second camera in order to film stuff like this for when I'm talking about the M50. And I know a lot of you want to know about the M6 Mark II, and you probably wanna know if it's a better choice than the M50 and things like that. So leave me a comment. Let me know if you would like to learn about the M6 Mark II. Also, it would be, I think, a better camera for this gimbal, still staying in the Canon line of mirrorless because it doesn't have the viewfinder. So I'm hoping that it doesn't hit the top of the gimbal and it just overall works better. So let me know what you think. And if you are using the M6 Mark II with the Fayotech G6 Max gimbal, please let me know because I would love to hear how, how they work together. Um, probably better than these two, I assume. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful for you to better balance your Canon M50 on the Fayotech G6 Max. Let me know if you have any questions. Of course, I definitely want to help you guys with this vlogging setup because it is the vlogging setup that I said I was gonna use for 2020. And of course things change rapidly, but it's, it's something I've been happy with and I want you to be happy with it as well. So let me know if you have any questions, let me know what other types of videos you would like to see or other ways that I might be able to help you level up your travel vlogging and video production skills. All right guys, I'm Alicia and I will see you in the next video. Bye.